Quote, I sent EFL a paper in September 2020 asking them to take down the video because it was unfair and inaccurate. This was well over a year ago. Nothing in it was threatening. It just said we would have to pursue other means to get the video removed if they didn't just take it down. End quote. Yeah, that's called a threat. Neuroclastic is threatening me with frivolous lawsuit because they didn't like my fully referenced critique of their organization's actions. And just to be clear, since they left out the specifics of what they mean by pursue other means, the original threat stated, quote, I, Terra Vance, have a responsibility to protect the organization against undue slander, libel, and false light. I'm not going to interact after this unless you have a specific suggestion or request about repairing my mistake from that night. I would like nothing more than to find a way to move on. But I'm also not prepared to let this sit on the internet when I'm trying to get legislation changed. If I have to, I will pursue other means to have it removed, not because I think we are above reproach or deserve to not be called out on mistakes, but because it is not accurate or fair to what actually happened. That is a very easy case to make, but it's expensive, a lot of work, and stress that is needless. End quote. So first they threatened my livelihood as a queer autistic creator, declaring themselves to be above criticism, only for them to now turn around and get pissy at me because I had the strength to call them out on said violence. And yes, an organization threatening someone with a frivolous lawsuit for documenting said organization's awful behavior is violence. Though I guess I should thank them in some way, since doing this has stripped away any hesitation I had about doing a standalone piece on Neuroclastic. I had already considered making this video after a number of my fellow autists reached out and expressed just how messed up neuroclastic threats were, but this denial of what happened, what I showed with evidence across multiple videos, gave me the kick I needed to further talk about these things. Yeah, before we can, I just need to give a content warning for the following topics. Homophobia, biphobia, transphobia, ableism, racism, police violence, death, gaslighting, extortion, and legal violence. If you like our work and appreciate the research put into each video, please consider supporting the channel via Patreon. You can also support us by liking, commenting, and sharing our work on social media. Hi there, my name's Ethel, and today we'll be talking about how self-proclaimed autism advocacy group, Neuroclastic, uses the threat of legal violence to silence its autistic LGBT plus critics. So as already mentioned, this video was brought about in part after talking to some of you who watched my most recent response to Stephanie Bethany, a popular autistic YouTuber who also advocates for the torture of queer folk, in which I showed how Neuroclastic had threatened me with legal violence for covering the topic previously. Because that video itself was a response to Bethany's attempts to lie about what had initially occurred. Specifically, an earlier response of mine which showed very clearly how she was advocating for the torture of queer folk, including queer youth. In fact, rather than tell you what she said, how about I just show you? Homosexual acts are wrong because the Bible has said so, and also it doesn't lead to anything other than a feeling. You don't end up with a child eventually. You just have a feeling in your body. Now, I do believe it is possible, it is possible for God to make a way and for you to be in a heterosexual relationship. And if it's the case that maybe you want to start a family or something like that, I believe that God can do that for you. Does that mean someone who has done that before cannot be clean and not come before God and repent and ask that he helps them to remain celibate? No, they can do that. They can always do that. Even someone who has been delivered from alcoholism. Some days they're going to sit there and they're going to think, you know, I really want a beer right now. Does that make them sinful? No. It just makes them a human being. Look, we shouldn't put people down. We shouldn't say, oh, it's okay to have these relations, relations with people because it's love. I don't think we always understand the difference between love and lust, but I am saying that the idea of prompting people to do whatever makes them feel good and just do what they feel leads you to people who do intimate things with animals and inanimate objects and things like that. Things that are very clearly not natural and not normal and just really jacked up because you told them, if you feel it, you should do it. So what I just want to say is that I think that churches should open up the doors to people who are either in homosexual relationships or think they're homosexual because of attractions and let them know, hey, 
homosexual acts aren't right, and you shouldn't be doing that with someone of the same sex. That last clip, where she tells churches they should open up their doors and lure LGBT plus folk in with the explicit intent of changing who they are, is what really gets to me. This isn't Stephanie Bethany simply stating an ignorant opinion, this is her endorsing the torture of queer folk, specifically queer youth, since they'll always be the main targets of these sorts of efforts. What's also important is my previous video on Neuroclastic, created after they tried to pressure me into self-censoring my original criticism of Bethany. I'd noticed them interacting with her as I got ready to publish my first video on Stephanie Bethany, I'd previously given Neuroclastic a shout out on the channel, and was even in the process of being given access to their blog, becoming a part of their creative team, so I reached out to them in private to try and warn them about who it was they were promoting. That is when Neuroclastic came after me publicly, stating that Stephanie Bethany was off limits to criticism. This was done on grounds that, as an autistic person, Bethany apparently lacks autonomy and thus couldn't be responsible for her own actions. This, of course, is a gross display of ableism from what is professing itself to be an autism advocacy group. It's neuroclastic stating that autistic people shouldn't be a part of society, that we need to be hidden away. Now, just to be clear, I don't necessarily believe neuroclastic actually holds this perspective, Rather, they were just saying whatever they could to try and stop criticism by an autistic queer person of their golden girl. Neuroclastic clearly believes that certain people, specifically well-presented white allocyshet women who seem to come from well-off economic backgrounds, are off limits as far as criticism is concerned. They wanted everyone to ignore the fact that Bethany was attempting to justify luring queer people into church with the explicit intent of reprogramming them to be either celibate or allosis het, something that amounts to psychological torture. In fact, many of the methods used in repetitive torture are the very same methods Ivor Lova stole whilst developing advanced behaviour analysis. ABA is a system of torture intended to mask autistic behaviours, forcing the person, usually a child, to conform to the standard set by neurotypical society. So again, quite brutal stuff. It's also worth noting that Bethany would even go on record to state that ABA is torture, meaning that my original statement was justified by her own standards. Returning to the events in 2020 and Neuroclastic's original attempt to get me to self-censor, I was having none of their bullshit, so I went ahead and published my first video on Stephanie Bethany in March of 2020. Remember that date. It will become important later. At that point, Terra, the person currently operating the Neuroclastic Twitter account, offered to remove the tweets trying to get me to self-censor. I told them that we were beyond that at this point, and that I'd need them to escalate things to the neuroclastic board. I thought that maybe Terra had been operating rogue, and hoped that, after a review, they might be required to undergo additional training to ensure such a thing never happened again. Two months later, and the case I'd raised with neuroclastic had finally been reviewed by the board. It's worth noting that the person who contacted me to give me the board's response was none other than Autistic Science Person. Keep that name in mind, as they will become important towards the end of the video. Returning to the board, their response was completely unacceptable, flat out denying what had occurred, leading me to publish my piece documenting everything that had gone on. I don't tolerate people telling me what I can show happened, didn't happen, that I just imagined things. What Neuroclastic was doing was attempting to gaslight me, attempting to undermine my confidence in my own cognitive ability by sheer assertion. Now, I just want you to stop and think about this for a second. I find it particularly appalling that an autism self advocacy group would immediately resort to gaslighting, the very same method that institutions have used to try and undermine autism self advocacy, and indeed still do to this day. The harm of gaslighting, as well as the form it routinely takes, is something Neuroclastic is certainly aware of, and yet they tried it on me anyway. So with the publishing of my video documenting what I could show and how Neuroclastic had lied, that's where I expected things to end. Turns out, I was wrong.
In September of that year, Neuroclastic reached out to me again, sending me 8 messages telling me they wanted to talk about the prospect of having me remove my video. And whilst their first message stated that they wanted a civil conversation, what followed was anything but. They made multiple accusations that I'd misled my viewers as to the nature of our interactions, conveniently ignoring the facts that I showed screenshots of what Neuroclastic had said. I responded by taking apart their assertions one by one, before finally telling them that, unless they were willing to accept responsibility for their actions, that they should stop harassing me. They ignored this and proceeded to threaten me with a slap suit, telling me that, quote, I, Terra Vance, have a responsibility to protect the organization against undue slander, libel, and false light. I'm not going to interact after this unless you have a specific suggestion or request about repairing my mistake from that night. I would like nothing more than to find a way to move on. But I'm also not prepared to let this sit on the internet when I'm trying to get legislation changed. If I have to, I will pursue other means to have it removed, not because I think we are above reproach or deserve to not be called out on mistakes, but because it is not accurate or fair to what actually happened. That is a very easy case to make, but it's expensive, a lot of work, and stress that is needless. End quote. Isn't it funny how Bethany's autism absolves her of all responsibility for what she posts, making her off limits from all criticism, but they can threaten me, the queer autistic person, with legal violence for criticizing them. Because make no mistake, that last line was clearly meant to intimidate me as just one person, though there are actually three of us, versus the entire organization of Neuroclastic. Because that's how slap suits work. Slap standing for strategic lawsuit against public participation. It doesn't matter whether the person being threatened is right or not, most people don't have the finances or the time to go to court and even make their case, ensuring that said incidents never actually make it that far. Instead, most people just have to accept the fact that the right to freedom of speech for purposes of criticism is a right they are denied. Key phrase here, most people, of which I am most certainly not. Not only is my wife a former practicing lawyer, but I'd already partially fundraised to take a previous slap suit to court. Money the channel has kept a hold of since, this keeps happening. Bigots keep threatening the channel with slap suit, only to turn tail the moment we show them that we are more than willing to fight this fight. Moral inflexibility. That's what neurotypicals call it, the way in which certain autistic people are unwavering in their moral convictions. Of course, holistic folk present it as a bad thing, arguing that it makes it difficult to get autistic people to exploit others in the vein of the capitalist hellscape we live in. But I see my convictions as my main strength. I will happily self-destruct on this case if that is to be my purpose in life, which is why I didn't even bother responding at the time. That, and the fact that Neuroclassic had repeatedly shot itself in the foot, by not having a legal professional look over their document. Though interestingly enough, they claim otherwise at a later date, stating that, quote, I did consult with a lawyer who said it was fully in the realm of slander, false light, and defamation. Because it is. It's not a fair criticism. It has many falsehoods and mischaracterizations in it. It's painting us as the opposite of who we are. End quote. This was the same thread in which they asserted that we didn't threaten a lawsuit. Well, if they weren't threatening a lawsuit, why then were they paying a lawyer for their time? Why then were they stating that if I didn't self-censor, they'd pursue having the video removed by legal means? It doesn't add up. As for their legal advice, I can guarantee that they didn't have the person help them write their official response. You can tell this in the fact that Terra included a non-legally binding declaration that they did not consent to their threat being made public. I'd already told them to leave me alone unless they were willing to accept responsibility for their actions, and I had a history of documenting Neuroclastic's behavior. They had no reasonable expectation for me to keep anything private. So unless I signed a non-disclosure agreement or I was in a position of confidentiality, this is not just worthless, it proves this to be the work of amateurs. Another way you can tell is through Neuroclastic's attempts to revise events as they happened. 
Take, for example, this line found at the start of point three, in which they state, quote, Responding to a tweet with a single word to someone about whom I knew nothing at the time is not associating with someone. End quote. Again, the actual issue at this point was them coming after me to try and get me to self-censor, but what's important here is the claim that Bethany was just someone about whom I knew nothing at the time. Take that line and compare it to this message sent to me by Terra via the official Neuroclastic Twitter account on the 2nd of May, 2019, which states, quote, I thought she was like 21 slash 22. I do know details about her as I have a friend who has been working trying to help her. End quote. So they did know about Bethany's homophobia to the point that they were trying to help her. This is why you always hire a lawyer the moment going to court becomes a possibility, to ensure you don't make this sort of blunder. Because if Neuroclastic ever changed their mind and decided to take things to court, I'd have a field date using this to prove that they had every intention of lying about events since they already have, leaving behind a paper trail as they did. That would destroy any remaining credibility they had in court, so I just ignored their threat, concentrating on more important things that were happening. Then, over time, I sort of became numb to what No Classic had attempted to do. That's just a sad fact about any sort of violence. It can become almost normalised over time. Which is why I'm incredibly thankful to all the wonderful people who commented on my previous video, reminding me that, hey, this is not simply wrong, this is heinous. Here we have what is supposed to be an autism advocacy group using the threat of legal violence to silence LGBT plus autistic folk in order to protect someone advocating for the torture of people like me and my loved ones. Fact is, that's not even the half of it. Because not only did you wonderful people remind me of just how shitty things were, one of you actually pointed out something else very important, something I had missed completely. Neuroclastic went ahead and made Stephanie Bethany an official writer after my original video critiquing her homophobia. Reminder, my original video was published back in March of 2020, with my follow-up regarding Neuroclastic going out in May. Meanwhile, Bethany published an article to the official Neuroclastic website in June that very same year, months after the issue blew up and months before Neuroclastic reached out to me telling me that responding to a tweet with a single word to someone about whom I knew nothing at the time is not associating with someone. And what's more is, Bethany has gone on to publish another article to Neuroclastic in March of this year, so months after they lied to me, claiming that they didn't know who Bethany was whilst threatening me. This is why it's so important to publish stuff like this. Whenever a person or organisation is spending more energy trying to keep things out of the public eye than fixing them, you need to get whatever information it is you have out there. What Neuroclastic is doing here is something I've had previous experience with, most notably involving Matt Dillahunty's attempts to keep discussion about transphobia in the secular community behind the closed doors of the atheist community of Austin, away from any input by trans people. It's the very same method used by abusers in all walks of life. It's designed to not only control the narrative, but isolate their victims. When someone goes public about abuse or bigotry, what that allows for is people in similar situations to seek one another out and form a collective, a community. It allows them to help each other to remind one another that what was done to them isn't okay, and as is most relevant here, to pass on vital information. And for that, again, I am incredibly thankful to all the people who reached out and shared their thoughts. I cannot express just how much you helped me find my centre. Of course, as you might have guessed from the quote at the start, things did not end there. For you see, as a few people began talking about the fact that Neuroclastic had threatened me with legal violence, it was only a matter of time before they'd return to try and further lie about events as happened. We see the same old lies as before, the assertion that they didn't try to get me to self-censor as well as the assertion that they didn't threaten me, both of which I supplied evidence of. They again repeat the assertion that I misrepresented them, failing to specify 
how I misrepresented them. They're also admitting the facts that I had escalated things to the neuroclastic board and only after said board tried to deny events as they occurred did I publish my video documenting what happened. This is another thing I have a lot of experience with, having given the notorious transfer rationality rules a month to clean up his act, only for people to act like I'd gone all out on him from the very start. People like this have to deny the time spent trying to get them to correct things on their own, else they have nothing. All they can do is paint me as the aggressor for merely documenting what they did. As explained in my previous video on neuroclastic, this is a common element of transmisogyny. Due to the way society has been built, people like those working at neuroclastic are at an advantage since they don't have to prove that I'm aggressive and unreasonable. All they have to do is assert such and a significant portion of people will automatically believe them on account of me being a trans femme person who was assigned male at birth specifically a not very passable one at that. I did not come after Neuroclastic. I sent Neuroclastic my video in private when I first saw them interacting with Stephanie Bethany as I thought they simply didn't know. They came after me, trying to force me to self-censor. So I raised the issue internally, demanding it be brought to the board, only for them to try and gaslight me when I showed them that I wouldn't let this go. They then go on to assert that they're not out there patrolling Twitter, defending their golden girl, when not only did I show the double standard and how neuroclastic treated me calling out the torture of queer folk versus Stephanie Bethany for promoting it, but they then decided to keep her around, making the conscious decision that the lure of Bethany's name meant more than the harm her presence caused queer folk. But it doesn't end there. For you see, admins at Neuroclastic are to this day still trying to exploit the work of queer folk without putting in the effort to ensure our safety, and that includes attempting to capitalize off of those of us working at Essence of Fort. Levi from A Levi Cool Bird is the editor for the channel. He's also an autistic trans man who has stood with me every step of the way through my ordeal with Neuroclastic. So you can perhaps imagine his surprise when neuroclastic member, autistic science person, began interacting with one of Levi's most recent threads that became incredibly popular. By the way, if you'd like to see Levi's thread about trans androphobia, I've gone ahead and added a link in the reference list. I've also added a timestamp link to our recent episode of The Trans Agenda, in which we explore said thread in further detail, so it's definitely worth the listen. Now, at first, Levi wondered if autistic science person simply didn't recognize him. He thought it unlikely, considering the facts that he has Essence of Tweets editor in his profile, but it is technically possible. Yet, as things continued, he began to notice a pattern. Autistic science person was liking and retweeting replies to Levi's post, but was in no way actually liking anything stated in the original. This removed all doubt in Levi's mind, leading him to take to Twitter, creating a post that stated, quote, If the person who threatened my friend with a spurious defamation lawsuit could stop interacting with replies to my thread, that would be great. End quote. Because yeah, that made him incredibly uncomfortable. Not only is it rude and entirely inappropriate, but it came across as a little hostile. We're not just colleagues with Levi working for the channel that was being threatened, but we're close mates. He knows what was at stake here was more than just a platform, but autistic science person didn't care. From my perspective, as the person who had been threatened, all they did seem to care about was how they could bolster their own presence off his back. Which, considering how we got into this whole mess to begin with, the very reason I approached Neuroclastic in private about Stephanie Bethany's queer phobia before they came after me publicly for criticizing her is really messed up. I'd previously given them a shout out in one of my videos, leading them to invite me to be a creator on their team. I'd gotten my own little email on everything and was ready to promote my personal work to a wider audience. That's when I came to find out that Neuroclastic deemed certain creators off limits when it came to criticism, no matter how horrific the things they said were. That's when I was faced with a choice. Do I stay and promote myself, 
using their platform, ignoring the issue? Or do I stand my ground, taking a hit? Because it was about more than potential money in growing my audience and my patrons through collaboration, it's also my image. I was the target of an incredibly transmisogynistic campaign that lasted for half a year, with one individual in particular going out of her way to abuse me constantly, culminating in her publicly ordering hundreds of thousands of subscribers to circumvent my block of her and abuse me on her behalf. I made the mistake of clapping back, posting a thread to my own wall about how I would not be broken, telling her why she was transphobic and how she could fix things for the communities she'd targeted. And for that, I got branded a monster. I was immediately deemed guilty on the sole basis that I am a transfem person who doesn't pass. And now I was about to expose a rather popular charity for some incredibly shady actions. I know I'm hard-headed, but I am no fool. I know exactly how that looks considering the word on the street about me. Now, in the years since 2020, I've learned to care less and less about said image. Not out of some noble choice, but because I've come to realise that that's an avenue no longer open to me. So I told myself, well, if all they're going to see is a monster, then I may as well continue to criticise people's actions in a way others are afraid to do. But that wasn't the case at the time. Yet, in spite of both of these things, I not only stepped away, but I spoke out. Because when I say the rights and dignity of queer folk are non-negotiable, I mean it. I'm willing to put myself on the line and take that hit. Meanwhile, Neuroclastic is not only willing to threaten queer autistic folk to fabricate a false sense of safety, but its members will then try to exploit the labour of the very people they threatened, seemingly because they can't imagine not capitalising off of the work of others. It really is revealing of just how they view queer autistic content creators, and I've gotta say, it feels incredibly dehumanising. And it seems that we might not be the only ones Neuroclastic seeks to exploit in this manner. Black people might also be a target. As shown in the final section of my video on Stephanie Bethany, she has a history of promoting racism on her channel. Again, allow me to show you some of what I mean. We talk about this in our church as this is a sign of surrender to God. This is also the sign we, we give, right, to police to say, don't shoot. Our hands should be lifted to praise God and say, I give you everything. It shouldn't be on the other side of a weapon of individuals who are paid to protect innocent people. This shouldn't have to be the position of an innocent person. You can't tell me that what happened to George Floyd isn't demonic. I know that I know that I know our God is a healer, that I know he is a redeemer, that I know that he is good. I know that he is the only one who can ever truly make us free because no government can tell us what our rights are. Our rights are given by God. Unity under the Holy Spirit to let God do what only God can do. Church, judge rightly. Repent and stand up against the devil and the wickedness and evil that is racism. We must come to God with the things that have hurt us and let him heal things that only he can heal because time sure hasn't done it. For me, I don't see it as reasonable to completely abolish the police system. I also do not believe that all cops are bad or other words that that saying or that acronym it may mean. There are situations of violence and wrongdoing on both the parts of citizens and police. I talked to you not too long ago about the issue of Black Lives Matter. Let me make it clear that I don't agree with the movement as a whole. I don't agree with the concept of hating police, hating all these people, tearing things down, being destructive, and a lot of the things that also kind of get melded into the movement itself. The constant both siding, claiming that racism is a religious issue that can only be resolved by black people converting to her religion, the denouncement of black-led efforts and the centering of her tears as she acts out a scene associated with black trauma in the US and the UK, 
are all clear examples of anti-black racism. Considering all that, you can perhaps imagine my concern when I saw this post by Neuroclastic calling for black autistic writers. Now, just to make myself absolutely clear, I take no issue with any black person who applies for the work or has already done so. It is incredibly difficult for black people to have their voices heard, let alone be paid for their time. My issue is not with them, period. Black people know what works best for them. What I want to know, however, is how Neuroclastic intends to respond to the fact that one of their writers has been outed as having extremely anti-black beliefs, such as taking a bigger issue with cops being called bastards than the murder of black people. I mean, Neuroclastic has already had months to act, yet haven't. Considering this and the way in which Neuroclastic has handled criticism of said person in the past, I hope you can understand my concern. Because I don't doubt for a second that they target any black person who is perceived as stepping out of line, especially if that involved criticism of their milk carton golden girl, and that's like I just wanted to bring to people's attention. Overall, Neuroclastic needs to do better. Yet they can't do that until they begin taking some damned responsibility for their actions, which requires them to admit to what they've already done. Will they actually do that? Well, I'm certainly not holding my breath anytime soon, but who knows. And if you appreciate what we do here and want to help out, please consider becoming one of our wonderful patrons who make all this possible, literally putting the roof over our head and food on the table. On that note, we'd just like to thank the following people. Matthew Kovac, Hannah Banghart, Gert Van Voorst, Sosh Daniels, Cthulhu, Higgins the Seagull, and Flynn. And for myself, Odita and Levi, take care now.